Hi guys, Archie Luxury, and today I want to discuss this amazing trip I took to Sydney. And uh, why was I going to Sydney? Well, it was very simple. I was there to deliver some very expensive wristwatches. Uh, very wealthy buyers, so uh, naturally, uh, when they uh, when they flew me down, it was business class, business class, and I had expensive cargo. I had some very, very delightful pieces to show to prospective clients. Um, I very graciously uh, entered the the business class end of the plane, and uh, this is a, a very enjoyable. I had a few pieces of my own. I took for comfort my well time, my Rolex Daytona, my two-tone blue seat. But I was also there to, to sell a number of very expensive pieces. And whilst the, uh, the time in business class was delightful, the highlight was an amazing, amazing selection of wristwatches that uh, somebody like Archibald Chesterfield III, the, the only true YouTube guru, the governor's governor, would be capable of securing an interested client. So uh, when this plane did land and my Rolex Daytona was used as the timer, I had the pleasure of seeing rocking horse shit. That's correct. This was one of the rarest pieces in the world. Rolex 1680 Submariner Red Dial. However, not just any 1680, a very extensive history file came with this piece. Punch card papers from 1976. <clears throat> the piece itself had a box, inner and outer box, the anchor, an extra link, a Your Rolex Oyster booklet from the 70s, not to mention absolutely everything you could hound, everything from um, handwritten correspondence with Rolex to service history, the Rolex Submariner 1680 Red Sub. This piece itself had been extensively serviced by Rolex. There were a few little things on this piece. <clears throat> the hands had been replaced by Rolex. The bezel and the bracelet had also been replaced over the course of its service history. However, fully documented and the big, the big factor was the case condition Yes, it had been polished by Rolex over the years. However, very thick lugs. Very thick. It was done very, very caring, caringly, very, very sympathetically by Rolex themselves. This piece is a gem. This piece here is a complete time warp piece. And everything about this piece is highly collectible. I've uh, had many Rolexes over the years, but I've only had a handful of Rolex Submariners with red, red writing. This piece here, if you uh, want to know the mark of the dial, this would be a Mark III or four onwards. Um, it's one of the the red Submariners. Look at the Swiss T25. So it's no service dial. This is the original dial. No nasty engravings on the back. No, this piece here was bought by rich people who carefully used this item of quality and sent it to Rolex when servicing was required. Very thick lugs. Very, very nice indeed. The replacement hands fitted are actually tritium. That's right. Even though the hands were replaced, which is a little bit of a negative, they were replaced by Rolex for tritium hands. So these hands in another 20 years will match perfectly and will not be an issue at all. 
The piece itself there just has a lovely patina to the markers. Everything about this piece smacks of quality and care. These are the sort of people who would have uh, religiously upgraded Mercedes-Benz after Mercedes-Benz because they know quality when they see it. This piece itself there had a bracelet which was fitted uh, halfway through its previous owner's life and uh, it was it was it has aged beautifully to have a patina and a quality aging process on it this piece itself is just gorgeous the the crystal is big and thick and chunky and meaty everything about this watch here just screams classic Rolex Yes, I do enjoy my modern Rolexes, but vintage pieces are a delight which every Rolex enthusiast should have an appreciation for. This here is probably one of the most collectible wristwatches of all times. In fact, I believe the Rolex 1680 Red Sub is the better investment when compared to the double red sea dweller the double red sea dweller may be slightly more valuable but it's nowhere near as usable as the sub marina and i say that because the sea dweller is really so ghastly thick and heavy whereas the 1680 in a uh, classical sense retains proportions that are just delightful to wear for the enthusiast to enjoy. This piece itself here is a gilt-edged blue chip investment for the Rolex collector who has a fair bit of coin. This piece is delightful and uh, I must say uh, the owners, the owner of this piece wanted confidentiality. I respect it. I respect confidentiality. He did not want his name brandied about the place. He wanted it kept secret. And I've, I've uh, entered into confidential agreement with the buyer. But uh, it does, does ask how much did this piece go for? What did it end up selling for? And I offered this piece to a number of dealers. A number of wristwatch dealers and collectors around Australia. So how much did this piece sell for? Well, I'll get to the point. I offered this piece to a number of dealers and collectors only to be lowballed by nasty, vicious, stingy fuckers. That is correct. They were very nasty, stingy fuckers. It's amazing how many top-end collectors in Australia think that Archibald Chesterfield III, just because I'm from Brisbane, may not have a sense of the international market price for highly collectible commodities. I don't need to speak with a fucking plum up my ass. I don't need to be at a Phillips auction or a Christie's auction to realize I have fucking gold in my fucking hands. So I'd like to say to all the cheap fucks out there, go fuck yourself, you cheap, nasty fuckers. You cheap, nasty fuckers, especially that foul fucking dealer in Melbourne, the pompous cunt who left water in a gold Rolex that he recently sold. I won't name this fucking vandal because I don't want to acknowledge the grub's existence, but let me say this. This piece here is sold to a very appreciative collector in the high 20s early 30s Australian dollars that's correct high 20s low 30s Australian dollars so uh, yes yes I uh, brokered the deal I brokered it and uh, I must say it was very enjoyable to uh, present this so many nasty vicious fuckers out there in the Rolex world think that uh, the Rolex collector like Archibald Chesterfield III from Brisbane won't know the prices well you stupid fucks have you not heard of eBay 
I am the pontiff's pontiff, you lousy, cheap fucks! And uh, I'm very, very, very happy to have sold the piece at what I consider to be a considerably uh, fair price. Interestingly enough, once this piece had been sold, uh, a rather vicious bidding war did did uh, propagate with several collectors upping the final price only for me to tell them that I don't deal with the grubby end of town. I don't deal with nasty fuckers who lowball me, hold out, thinking I have a desperate punter. No, I've done my homework. I have done my best for the client, and it's an absolute honour to present these sort of class of pieces on the Paul Pluto and the Archie Luxury, Archibald Chesterfield III, Archie Luxury Channel. So, this is the Rolex 1680. Would all you snivelling nasty fucks out there, please like, subscribe, tell your circle jerking friends... And um, don't forget, don't forget to put some really nasty, foul comments down below. We love them nasty, foul comments. And um, I say, old chap, telly ho. I had a fantastic time in Sydney. I enjoyed business class, as one would expected, uh, selling a, a caliber of wristwatch of this standard and uh yes it was an enjoyable experience so to all the nasty fuckers out there go fuck yourself i'm archibald chesterfield the third tell me what you lousy cheap fuckers think of that <laughs>this is it fucking hell it's beautiful Dave Dave it's beautiful Dave that's fucking beautiful that is a beautiful car Dave
I love the white. I love the badge on the rear C pillar there. So classy how they. The finish is really good. Look at this. They've got little channels here. It's a lux high end luxury car, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's a, a piece of shit. It's the uh, ETS quadruple. Oh. So that tells you it's the, uh, it's it's the GTS. GTS. That's the Quattroporte. Uh, Quattroporte. Four door. Oh, that's the watch. It's a fucking massive key. It goes with your ego, does it? Yeah, you know you've got a fucking decent key. And it's fucking are. massive. So, Nando's. Nando's. so we're going for a drive now first, are no, we? No, no, we'll get Nando's because it's just around the corner. Oh, we're not going to leave my bag here. Okay, we'll go for a drive. We'll go for a drive. Let's okay. go for a drive. Here's your key. Yep. I think you'll take that. I'll take that. Da -da -da -da. That's cool. Thank you. Oh, okay. Look how much room you've got. Fuck, it's like a limousine. Yeah, it's a long it's a, It's an Italian, it's a corrupt Italian minister's limousine. You know, the really dodgy fuck who, who uh, sold the rights to industrial waste, you know? If you want to move the seat back, you yep. can. It's electric, isn't it? Here's the button on the yeah, side. Yeah. That was good. Got it, got it. Do you love this car? Yes, I do. What's her name? Oh, she's just my Quattroport. It's just called Quattroport. You didn't give her a name? No, I don't give her a name. Like Lucy or? No, no, I just call it Quattroport. Do you love the car? Yeah. More than people? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah of course. It's Quattroport. <laughs> fuck's sake, it's a Maserati, for fuck's sake. I love my BMW. See, so you've got here, so you've got all these different, so you've got ice. Oh, okay, right? yeah. Yeah, you know, and I understand. Manual. Yeah, it's just, it's just like an auto. It's just like an auto. Put it in drive and off yeah, you go. Yeah, and then you've or got do you, the pedals. Do you use the pedals? I generally don't use the pedals when, when I'm driving in. You know what I love about this car? Even though I haven't got my seatbelt on, mm. it doesn't give a fuck. They're Italians. Yeah. It does, it's not going to chime like a fucking Toyota. It, it, you know? it, it does beep if you if you don't put your seatbelt on in the driver's seat. Oh, okay. They're not in that one. They don't, they don't give a fuck a passenger. That's the mistress. Yes. Put yes. that bitch through the window. Do you like the... And then on the side here, so I've got controls here. Oh, so I've got vented seats. Oh. So on the passenger, if, if you want to go vented, yeah, you'll feel oh. that. You'll feel that. That's so cool, isn't you, it? Can you feel that? Jesus, nice. It's beautiful, and this is all leather, is it? It's suede it's leather. Suede. Uh, Alcantara. Oh, fuck. And see the red stitching? Yes. That's extra. Yes, yes, that's all extra. Carbon fibre. This is all carbon fibre. And the Maserati fiber. clock. Yeah, you gotta go the Maserati clock. They all do it, don't they? Yeah, it's traditional. That's, but it says GTS, doesn't it? Sorry? GTS on it, on a Maserati yes, logo. Yes, On this one it does, because it's a GTS. You're paying extra for that, of course. Yes. You've got the Maserati there. Oh, fuck. Okay, let's go. Oh, you warm her up nicely, you just give her some... Fuck, this is a bitch to get out of, isn't it, or no? Thank you. 
money because it costs nothing. <laughs> so this is the congratulations to everybody.
train into the city. This is where I'm staying. So uh, this is St. James Station. So off we go. Off we go. Off the train. Here we go. Hi guys, this is Glenn from Regal. How are you doing this morning? I got a couple of ideas that might interest you. We um, import truck tires from Asia. We sell 1124s, 1122s, 150 bucks uh, in a container load, of course, in a container load. Shipping is free. If you have ever thought of reselling truck tires, you can kind of, uh, if whatever city you're in, people need truck tires. You could buy one container and resell it and make yourself some passive income. I can say if you'll make it doing it, if you want, but the average guy that resells for us makes around fifteen to eighteen thousand dollars on one container and you can normally sell a container in two, three weeks. Um, the other thing is if you need less than uh, you know, container load, like eight tires, ten tires, you can go to our websites. Uh, www.newtrucktires2yourdoor.com www.newtrucktires2yourdoor.com and you can just place your order there. We uh, would like to get more resellers in the United States so if you're interested it's a great way to make a, a, a living. But as I say uh, the disclaimer is I, I, I can't say what you're going to do that's that's up to you whatever effort you put in but we do assist with advertising we do help and uh, we care about our customers and we care about you being successful. Uh, of course, not everybody resells. They buy tires for the fleets and save a lot of money. Um, but on the website, all the prices are there. You're welcome to just browse through it and look at it. And if you have any questions, call me. Uh, my number is 602-513-9896. Call me anytime, you're very welcome. I don't care what time of day or night it is, you're welcome to call me anytime. Yes, so Glenn is my name, 
So remember that, and if you need anything, give me a call. Thanks.